Typical. Where was I? Does, does anyone remember when George Harrison died? Without looking it up, like off the top of your head. Can you even give me a year? It's not a date that comes to mind, but here you go. When did John Lennon die? 1980. That's correct. December 1980. As many readily know. But even a lot of Beatles enthusiasts will struggle to remember when George Harrison died. The reason you don't remember is because it was November 2001. The biggest thing on the news at the end of that year was not... Wow, look at the celebrities who died. There was some real news. We all genuinely thought World War Three was happening. And we're yet to be proven wrong. I mean, really, really, this is World War One. Those skirmishes we had in the early 20th century were mostly European wars. But at this point, the whole world is playing risk. <laughs> and everyone's very concerned about what's going on in the middle of the board. As is typical of a developed game. And late 2001 was where it started to get real. So there wasn't an enormous amount of mourning over a dead beetle. But John Lennon died the month after Ronald Reagan was elected president. 1980 was one of those years where the worst things that happened were celebrities dying and democracy happening. It was also an Olympic year. Not a particularly memorable one, though. And the second Star Wars movie came out. But it, it didn't help much to cheer people up. There was a terrorist attack at Oktoberfest that year. It wasn't a huge one. It kind of happens every year. <laughs> people are getting mass murdered, but those people aren't celebrities. And those other people didn't do nothing. <laughs> and, yeah, as you can imagine, a lot of people left 1980 wailing about what an awful year it was. And why was it an awful year? Because some celebrities died. And democracy had a controversial result. Uh, hey, guys! That happens literally every year. Somewhere, that, that is what democracy does. It has controversial results. And that is what celebrities do. They die. Especially when they've taken a lot of drugs in their lifetime. But we almost made it to 70. Lemmy did make it to 70. Just, this, this, that's not sad news. That's astonishing news. It was technically 2015 when Lemmy died. But it was right before Bowie. So that they were very close to exactly the same age. If Lemmy and Bowie can make it to roughly 70, anyone can. Sad news. This is miraculous news. Did anyone even realise Leonard Cohen was alive? <laughs> So, yeah, if, if the worst thing you can say about the year is that celebrities died and democracy happened, then you had an awesome year. You had a breeze. You had a flawless victory there. The, the death of uh, a loved one in one's own life is a universal problem, but the death of someone you've only ever known as an electronic source of entertainment is what we call a first world problem. So it does, I mean, it, in a few perhaps coincidental ways, it does feel like we're at the dawn of the new 80s. Instead of Ronald, we've got Donald. Instead of Thatcher, we've got the Razor. And instead of Trudeau, we've got Trudeau. Like I say, possibly all coincidences, and maybe, maybe it'll only be four years this time. But this time, it's not set to the backdrop of the Cold War. Back then, 
the liberal crusaders of the left were interested in getting us out of a cold war with Russia. This time, they're more interested in getting us into a hot one. And in the meantime, there's hot and cold running war in the Middle East. None of us can even remember if we're still supposed to be at war with one of those dudes. And last time around, we were also busy engaging in the business of perhaps overcompensating by encouraging communist ideas to flourish in our institutions. And this time around, we're busy engaging in the business of perhaps overcompensating by encouraging jihadist ideas to flourish in our institutions. I'd be lying if I said I wasn't a little bit worried about what kind of useful idiots we're going to grow in the next 30 years. But don't panic. The, the, the 80s was a time of reinvention, of, of, of science fantasy and cyberpunk, of video games and alternative comedy and pirate radio and some exceptionally bad music and some exceptionally good music. <laughs> some exceptionally, shall we say, unforgettable music. It was when a generation, a, a, a very splintered generation, stood up and said, the establishment doesn't represent me, so I'm going to do my own thing. It's, it, it's all happening in a different order now, and it's different arrangement regarding the colour schemes. Uh, and like I said, it might be shorter, it might be one term rather than a three term reign, but it'll burn three times as bright. These things do progress in cycles, but the cycles either spiral in or spiral out. It either tapers to a point where we're all changing our minds constantly, or it opens out to an infinity where we never change our minds. And that might be because we got the answer right. Or am I not? It's like, it's like a blindfolded person trying to walk in a straight line. Even across a desert, so it's we can't do it. You you end up doing sort of sort of that. <laughs> you fuck up until you realise your mistake, and then you have to start all over again. Or take off the blindfold. It's a lot easier in daylight. Don't worry, guys. I'll see you in the new nineties. It'll be all right. Actually, you know what? Hi. Wait, what? Where are you at, Mike? I'm in the same place I've always been, but at the other corner of the building. <gasps> Six years, and all, all I've ever shown you is the toilet that one time. I mean, very few, very few of you have been here for six years. But yeah, fun fact: 2016 saw the beginning, but not the anniversary of my tenth year on YouTube. My 10th anniversary will be in June of 2017. I know there's a lot of people who've been here for a couple of months going, I can't believe he doesn't have more subscribers. Yeah, you're, you're adorable. Bless you and hug you, and I don't mean to mansplain you, but you don't know the half of it, or the eighth of it, or the dime bag of it. But thank you very much for the compliment. One day I will learn how to take it. So, yeah. The last six of those ten years were created and recorded from this building at a location undisclosed any further than the Greater London area. And now I have it to myself. My friends left for, for, for Australia a couple of days ago. And I don't mean they went on holiday, they've moved there. And I'm doing that thing where you bounce off the proverbial walls. I thought it would be... I thought it would be like this right away. So I wasn't prepared for what in fact happened right away. The first couple of days after they left, I felt this quite quite profound sadness. These the, the these weren't just randomers I was living with. They were <laughs> at least now you know what a randomer is. It'd be easy to remember my name. Yeah, no, these were these were a couple of folks I've known for more than fifteen years now. We met at university. <laughs> I'm I'm older than I apparently look to a lot of people. And or 
Not as wise for my age as I sound. That does follow, I'm afraid. But yeah, these were actually these these were close friends of mine since since uni. We've sort of lived together in various combinations the last six years of which we're in this place. We've had some quite extraordinary times together and I've barely spoken to them for the last three years. Even though they were in just the other room. Because of because of this. Not because of the content. They they like what I do and they're on board and stuff. But it's just I've barely emerged from my bedroom for the last three years. Because my work involves being on my own and because by my own choice, my leisure time is also involved being on my own. When I take time off from the internet, I goof around with music and games and shit and I do it all from the same chair. So, of course, in, in, the, in, the, in the few days before they left, I, I emerged from my den, tried to put the internet down and just chill out with my friends. And then they left. And I realised rather suddenly how much of my life the internet has eaten. I mean, I fed my I fed my life to the internet willingly, but I ended up with a feeling that I'm told parents get when their children grow up and leave home, and that children get when their parents die. You wish you'd spent more time with them. It's yeah. It's a you don't know what you got till it's got. Cliche. It's nothing new or enlightening. I just sort of let you in on a little something, something. Don't let the internet eat your life. Is what I'm saying. Your social life in particular. And don't let your social life eat the internet either. See if you can draw up some kind of harmony. Luckily, the the three years I've spent in my bedroom did not go to waste regarding my social life. I've been building a, a larger, albeit less stable, platform of acquaintances. It's 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 bound to be disproportionate. True enough. I, if if I lost half my subscribers overnight, I'd be uh, a little bit stressed, but I probably wouldn't shed a tear. But the the two meat bags who just walked out of my home for the last time did uh, did rather catch me off guard there. But I'm certainly not going to sit around and complain about being lonely, because I'm not. I've long since lost count of the states, provinces and countries in which one or more of you uh, absurdly kind and generous people have promised me a drink and a slice of local hospitality. If I so chose, I could probably surf sofas across the world for the rest of my life. But I'm not going to. I'm not that kind of hippie. <laughs> I'm the sit in a cave working on my madness kind of hippie. Wait, you're like, I'm a goth. <laughs> I'm a goth who dresses like a hippie. We, you know, we used to just be known as miserable bastards. <laughs> Having said that, Having said all of that, there is this new thing I do now. I, um, jet set. <laughs> That's a verb I never thought I'd have to conjugate for the first person. But yeah, it snuck up on me. I, I, I jet set. I frequently fly to other countries for the sake of public events. Incidentally, if all goes to plan, I'll be jet setting to Australia in the summer. <laughs> their winter. For, for the next international conference on Menjaces. So I'll get to see my friends anyway. Really, I have nothing to worry about, but less than first world problems. Honestly, I'm just, I'm emotional sometimes over nothing. And yeah, I'll also, I'll be jet setting in less than a queen's fortnight. I will be returning to Calgary. Alberta, Canada. For the first time since the event 
for which I am now attending the court dates. We're not intro. We'll do. do I'll link you to Karen's video she, so she can explain it. She's a lot more sensible than me when it comes to these things. I was supposed to do a video just about that, but I thought I'd just I'll just bury it in the back of something relatively sensible. I'm doing a relatively sensible video. I know it's weird. It's almost like I'm actually vlogging. <laughs> Jesus, there's another verb I didn't expect to find hanging from my face. I'm a vlogger and a jet setter. Fuck, I need to think about my life all over again. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah, also, for, before I forget, the red pill is coming to Norwich. Kiss my face. I I, I think I might, I'll, put, I'll put some details in the low bar when I'm less drunk. If all goes to plan, I will be there in Norwich uh, on the 18th. Of January, hot on the heels of the Calgary thing, and and, and and we'll do that. And after that, it's very possible that you won't see the famous room ever again. So it's just as well as I've been hiding it behind that screen, isn't it? But um, we've got the months of January and February before I will be necessarily repositioned. So in the absence of many requests, I thought I'd go through... I thought I'd go through the channels in that Questions for anti SCW's video. I've, I've got to know to a twice rule, but of all the like nine or ten in there, yeah, none of them have had their own video except two of them, uh, which is Roland's and Shives. <laughs> Roland's and Shives. <laughs> Those are two diseases. Sounds like the worst diseases you can get for each testicle. So yeah, it, yeah, I don't know. If I do them in order of appearance, that means I'll start with the janitor. If I do them in order of what I noticed first, I'll be starting with H Bomber guy. Jesus wept that douche is a fuck douche. No, yeah, all right. I will, I will make the transition uh, as smooth and unnoticeable and random as possible. With screens and smoke and mirrors and shit. You don't need to care where I am. That's that's one of the things about me maybe or something all right fuck off all y'all <laughs> i'll see you soon enjoy that annual event where we celebrate the numbers changing it'll all be worth it in the end do that thing where you fuck right